Dive practice in the Centerville River, a change in age for qualified swimmers, and a big project planned in Ketuit. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Wednesday, August 21st, 2013. I'm Sarah Colvin. Rescuers from the Centerville Osterville Marsons Mills Fire Department and the Hyannis Fire Department spent the morning on the Centerville River today doing some dive training. Our Channel 18 cameras caught up with dive team leader Chris Adams on the bridge. We're running a swift water dive team operations training today, um, which allows us to train for situations like a bridge where in the summer, as you know, oftentimes kids, people jump off bridges, a lot of fun, but every once in a while there's an accident. So like to train in swift water, which is a little bit unique in terms of operations compared to, to um, calm water diving. Uh, we train once a month for about four hours year round, including the winter months. And we're training today in a joint operation with the Hyannis Fire Department dive team. Yesterday, the Board of Health met to tackle a lengthy agenda. One of the items discussed was a change in age for qualified swimmers from 18 to 16. Board of Health Chair Dr. Wayne Miller explains. The reason behind this, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the requirement, the age requirement for lifeguards is 16. And uh, in order to make it consistent, um, we felt that, uh, we, we thought that it would be best if we had the same age cut off, both for lifeguards and qualified swimmers. I mean, there's really no argument why one should be older or younger than the other. And 16 is the nationwide standard for for lifeguards. So just to make it standard in town for our for the people that we accept to police the pools, we thought we would standardize it at 16. Who requested to put this on the agenda? Tom did. I did. Um, there was a... What prompted that? A couple of motel operators told me they had trouble finding um, persons interested in this position of qualified swimmer and but there are plenty of um, the, perhaps there are more people that might be interested if there was if the age was between 16 and 18. Director of Public Health Tom McKean talks about the difference between a lifeguard and a qualified swimmer. On the sheet that the Board of Health signs it requires CPR certification first uh, familiar with first aid tread water for five minutes be able to swim several laps in the pool, be able to retrieve an object from the bottom of the pool, um, be familiar with life-saving equipment. What, what's the difference between that and a, and a lifeguard? I mean, why would one qualify for one and not the other? A lifeguard requires additional certifications, uh, cert actually being certified in first aid and community CPR and in, in uh, life saving. The Board of Health also held hearings for three local establishments found in violation of tobacco regulations. Dr. Miller talked about the town's method for testing compliance. There is a, a basically a, an operation where the county brings young people around. They try to buy, buy smoking materials inappropriately because they're too young and if it happens you get caught. And the first time you get caught it's basically a warning. Uh, and you have to satisfy the board that you have the proper procedures in place to train your, your employees so that they know how to do tobacco sales properly. The second time you get caught, it's usually a $100 fine. The third okay. time you get caught, it's some greater fine plus a suspension of your license to sell tobacco products. The Board of Health also talked about the plan from utility company NSTAR to use herbicides on its rights of way. Dr. Miller says the state rules can trump town regulations, but... There, there is state law that preempts local regulation of pesticides or herbicides. Um, however, I, I, I thought that there was an exemption in Karen Malchus actually found it for us, which is under a state reg 333 CMR 11, 
and I've, I've highlighted it there in blue. We are not allowed to enforce it, but we are allowed to bring forth our concerns at the public comment period. Mm. And um, it has to be taken into consideration. And I think the most powerful thing there is in the event of a question or dispute as to which setback applies to a sensitive area, the more restrictive setback shall apply. So I put together this. I mean, again, I think it's simple, straightforward. Tom and I talked it over. We did add one phrase, uh, the second to last paragraph at the end. Can you read what, what we added, Tom? After attached, it says, a copy of which is attached, especially as it- or As they apply to sensitive areas such as water supply, well recharge areas, wetlands, and surface water bodies, a copy of which is attached. The, 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 ground, the ground soils are different, the percolation rates are different, the ability of the water table to absorb and process these contaminates are different. They are not dealing with the sole source aquifer, they're not dealing with estuaries that are compromised. So I think that, that there is a very strong argument that one size doesn't fit, fit all when it comes to these herbicides and pesticides. Um, and so that's why that's why I put forward. So I've I've asked Tom to put this on letterhead, and if you two agree to, sign, I've signed it. Tom signed it. Karen Malkus will sign it. Then we can pass it on to the to the uh, town council to introduce with all of the comments from the town of Barnstable. The Conservation Commission met yesterday as well in dis a continued discussion on a plan for a big project in Kituit. The Rushy Marsh Realty Trust is working to redevelop, construct, and maintain the existing horse farm at 1541 Main Street in Kituit. Engineer Michael McGrath talked about the plans. In any case, there is also this entire valley is within a mapped uh, floodplain. So what we have here is DEP coastal banks um, that are on both sides. I've sort of concentrated this graphic on this side as far as the existing conditions are concerned. So now what I like to do is start out with the, I've, I've divided this sort of arbitrarily just because of the ease of preparing the graphics. This is like <laughs> <laughs> broken. <laughs> This is the west side. This is the western third of the site. This is the coastal bank. Mm -hmm. The I'm going to call the an actual floodplain is the surveyed floodplain. Um, and that is the actual location of the contour that is, I think it's 11 feet in this area. This again is the 100 foot setback from the bordering vegetated wetland, the 50 foot setback. So there are scattered and isolated and fragmented coastal banks um, that are on this side of the valley. They're all uh, state coastal banks? They're all state time. banks. There's state no local bylaw banks. banks. So the only local jurisdiction is within that 100. That's right. Um, and so I arbitrarily chose this, uh, the activity that is within jurisdiction. Uh, jurisdiction is, on yours you should see a purple line that's sort of light, and the jurisdiction comes down like this. So basically you have jurisdiction over the valley. And uh, if I could just start here, there's an existing trail that, that we're going to widen, and then the trail will be extended over here. They're going to build a few jumps inside this paddock. They're going to move the driveway that crosses here so that it, it's, um, they're going to remove the paved driveway. The driveway is actually shown the ghost in here. The Conservation Commission wants further input before approving the project. They'll take the matter up again next month. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin.